Ephesians 5 is where I want to take a, a few moments for this abbreviated sermon that I have to do since y'all have done all that worship and praising God. Verse 15 says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise but understand what the will of the Lord is. Somebody say, I want to know what the will of God is for my life. Right now, he's about to tell you what the will of God is. He says, I want to know what it is, and here's what it is. Number one, this applies to most of y'all here today. Do not be drunk with wine. Look at your neighbor and say, <laughs> look at your neighbor and say, stop drinking. Go ahead, tell him. Tell him to stop drinking. I see y'all on communion Sundays when we get to that part. Not y'all, y'all, you know, put your head down or cover your mouth. You don't say it. Stop drinking. It's right here, what, that's what the will of God is. Did y'all see that? Do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation. Debauchery is what the word means. Excessive, uncontrolled. But then he says this, but be filled with the Spirit. Here's what he's saying. If you want to get drunk, get drunk in the Holy Ghost. Because there ain't no party like the Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. Now what I want to talk to you about today is about this verse. 18, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when, I, I want to talk about why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why do we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Why, why is he telling us to be filled? And why is it so important? When I was growing up in church, if somebody started shouting, we used to say they got happy. <laughs> and they'd jump and shout and jerk and dance. I would get scared because I felt like something must have came over them and hit them and took control of them and I got nervous because whatever it was, I didn't want it to come over and jump on me. <laughs> Is there anybody else that, you know, like, as a kid, that's how I felt. But. Paul's admonishment to the church in Ephesus is to tell them and encourage them, and I want to say to you today how important it is for us to be filled with the Spirit of God. And being filled with the Holy Spirit is not a sudden thing that jumps on you and makes you jump and shout and run around. Matter of fact, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you worship God, you don't lose control. You don't lose control of yourself. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't beat up everybody on your row. I wish I had a praying crowd with me here today. You still have control of yourself. Stop hurting people around you. You happy, but everybody else around you is sad and hurting and in pain. He says, be filled. And it's not, being filled is a lifestyle. It's a, it's a way of life. It's not a one, matter of way, being filled is not a one-time event. Being filled is a continuous process, a continuous thing that we need to stay plugged in. That's why church is important. That's why it's important for you to come to worship. It's important for you to get the word and receive the word and worship God and all of those things. It's important because God will refill us. We are being filled and refilled. And, and somebody said, well, what, what, am I getting more of God? No, you're going to get all of God. When you get Jesus, you get all of Jesus you're going to get. You get all of the Holy Ghost who comes and lives inside of you. It's not a question of you getting more of God. It's a question of does he get more of you? And if the truth be told, what happens, what, what had happened was he was in control. You got to a place in your life where you surrendered to God and let him have control, but your flesh keeps rising up 
pulling, con taking control from the Holy Spirit. You keep taking the reins out of his hand. You keep taking the steering wheel out of his hand. You keep pushing him out of the driver's seat and you forget in that seat. And that's why you need the Holy Ghost to come back in your life, kick your, um, let's see, how do I want to say this? Push you off and out of the driver's seat and let him have control. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying to you today? And what I want to tell you today, what I'm going to talk to you is why it's important for you, why we need to be filled, because we do need to be filled. Tell your neighbor, you need to be filled. That's why you need to stop drinking. Go ahead, tell them one more time. He says, be filled. Being filled helps you to deal with the issues that you have in life. When you, when you are filled with the power and presence of God, he orders your steps. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, he directs your path. He controls your life. You need a regular empowerment of the Holy Spirit. It is a lifestyle. Somebody say lifestyle. It's not a one-time deal. Tell your neighbor, it's not a one-time deal. It's a lifestyle. Now, why do we need to be filled? Because then he begins to tell us why we need to be filled and what the evidence, actually, here's the evidence of, of being filled. When, again, another thing that happened when I was growing up, you know, there were churches that taught that when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going to speak in tongues. And if you ain't spoken in tongues, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. And, yada. and some people believe that, and that's, that's their prerogative for what they believe. I know why they believe that. But the bottom line is, I believe that there are some things that will be evidenced in your life when you are filled with the Spirit of God. And, amen. And when you get filled, you know, what, why I think it's so important, why I think it's significant is because when the Holy Spirit fills you, it, it, it doesn't leave room for other stuff. So your problem is you have made room for the Holy Spirit to have free reign in your life and other stuff is calling the shots. Ooh, I'm teaching and preaching better than y'all are saying amen. And so he says this. I love this right here. Look at verse 19. He's, here's the first thing he tells us. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody t in your heart to the Lord. See, the first, here's the first reason you need to be filled, and here's why we need the power and presence of the Holy Ghost, so that you can be singing the right songs. So you can sing the right songs. So we just finished singing that song. Some of y'all couldn't open your mouth. Not, not because you didn't know the song, but your life is not right to sing that song. Uh, um, Come here for a minute. So, so, so here's how the Holy Ghost works. Raise your hands and worship God like you're worshiping. Thank you, Lord. The Thank Holy Ghost says, put your hands down. You ain't living right. He pokes you in the, the, the conscious right here. Thank you, Lord. Said, nope, nope. You know you're not doing right. You know you're going to places you, you shouldn't be going. Being Thank you, goodness. So, so you, you, you feel you, guilty. You feel, not guilty, you feel conviction. Let me use that word. Yes, sir. Conviction. Yes. But if you can, when you are doing the right things and living the right way and walking the right path, you can raise your hand without, without conviction, without being challenged. All right, good. Can you worship God? Yes, I can. Okay. <laughs> you can sing the right song. Amen. You, you can worship God, you see. And what I like about this, and when you read this in the King James Version, verse 19 says, uh, speaking uh, to yourself. So you can sing the right song and say the right things to yourself. You can, you can speak the right words to yourself. And I, and I, I try to re remind people, see, the problem is talking to yourself is not bad. It just depends on what you're saying to yourself. The Holy Spirit will help you say the right things to yourself. 
And y'all have heard me say before, and I want to say it again today, there are times in my life where I didn't say the right things, and I defeated myself, and I was frustrated and upset and depressed and all of that stuff. But I give God the praise today. He has taught me a new song to sing. Yes, I had to put down some of the songs I was singing. I was singing some of the wrong songs. Y'all know I am a temptation addict. Yeah, I'm a Temptations addict, and, and, and I used to sing the Temptations songs. So that's, I, I, I don't know what y'all are singing. I don't know what today's music is. I can't tell you about all of the. I don't even know who the artists are today. I don't know who y'all be listening to. Who, other than Beyonce, I don't know who y'all be listening to. Who they be listening to, uh, Anthony? Huh? Who they be, who they be listening, who they be listening to? Everybody, that's a safe answer right there. I get myself huh? Yeah, exactly. Would you? Amigo. They act like they don't know what I'm talking about. You know they know who they are. Who can tell me the truth? Aaron? Who they be listening to, Aaron? Now, Aaron used, Aaron, come here, Aaron used to play for Usher. Did y'all know that? He used to play for Usher, and we brought him here. Who they be listening to, Aaron? Oh, man, they, they, they like uh, Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny? Man, they, they like Migos. Migos. They like Lotto. Lotto? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, they, they like a lot of people. A lot of people. Y'all that's, know who those they, people are? they like out there. They okay. Who else you say? <laughs> I don't know who y'all be listening to. I used to listen to The Temptations, The Shy Lights, The Stylistics. Y'all don't know who those groups are. The Dazzling Delphonics. Anybody know who the Delphonics are? Didn't I blow your mind this time? <laughs> y'all know nothing about that. That's when they sang music back then. That's, that's when the music had melody and a song and a message. I got sunshine on a cloudy day. Who, know, who, who in here know what I'm talking about? Now all of their music wasn't good. The temptation says, I, I can turn the grayest sky blue. I can make it rain whenever I want it to. I can build a castle from a single grain of sand. I can make a ship sail on dry land. Wait, wait. But my life, listen to this. But my life is so incomplete and I'm so blue because I can't get next to you. He's saying, I can do a lot of stuff, but I can't get in you. I'm trying to get, get with you. I had to drop that one. I'm just, I'm just saying, what y'all, what y'all be, what y'all, that's what we used to sing. I had to let that go. I had to push it. I had to let it go. I had to forget about it. Um, I had to change the music I'm listening to. Because the, you, what you listen to dictates your beliefs and your theology. And, and so, Paul said to the church in Ephesus, I want you to be filled so you can sing the right song. But that ain't the only thing. Here's why you need to be filled. Not only do you, will you sing the right song, but you will also, somebody say, you will have the right spirit. You will show the right spirit. And what kind of spirit is that? Look in verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 20 is telling us when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, he gives you an attitude of gratitude. 
Being filled with the Holy Spirit will make you grateful even when life is not treating you the way you want to be treated. Y'all ever met some ungrateful people? Dissatisfied. What I learned about the Holy Spirit and the presence of God in your life is no matter how horrific your life might be, God will help you find something for which you are thankful for. Yeah, you, you, you give thanks for, for whatever, wherever you are. Amen. You, you will learn to find something for which to give praise to God for. Yeah, I, I don't want to be around people who are ungrateful. I, I, know, I know things that may not be going the way you want it. I know you may not have gotten your raise. I know you might not have a job. I know you might not have all the stuff you want going on in your life right now, but here's what I am sure of. I am absolutely sure that God has done something for you in your life for which you can be grateful. We used to sing a song that says, there's always somebody who's worse off than you. There's someone who would love to be in your shoes. It could have been me, outdoors, no food, no clothes, or just alone without a friend, or just another number with a tragic end. But thanks be to God, I have so much to be thankful for. You know what thankfulness does? It demonstrates a, le a level of trust in God. When you can give God praise for where you are in the midst of your drama, you are in essence saying to God, I may not like where I am today, but I know when I get to the end of the journey, you got my best interest in mind and heart. Anybody here know and recognize that God has your best interest? And though what you're going through right now might be tough and difficult, when you get to the end of the journey, when you get to the destination of where God's taking you, you will be better than where you are right now. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but somebody ought to learn to give God some praise and thank him because I know things will get better. I feel a shout coming on my soul right now. Okay, I got to hurry up. It's 10 o'clock. I got to I gotta be finished. I got one last point to tell you. You got to sing the right song. You got to show the right spirit. Do y'all see my R's and my S's? I need, to, I need to highlight that I've alliterated this thing for your benefit, R and S. Here's my next and last thing. You have to learn to submit to the right saints. That's verse 21. Look at verse 21. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Submitting. You got to learn to submit to the right saints. And let me talk about that for a minute because... This is really the sign, one of the other signs that you really are filled with the Holy Spirit, that you live a submitted life. The question is, who are you submitted to? I feel tension in the room. Anybody who has no one to whom they are submitted to is out of control. Amen. Uh, submitting to one another in the fear of God, recognizing that God sees me and knows what I'm doing and where I'm at, and he's watching over me. So he says, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Now let me talk about, see, this, this is so important that he now spends the, the next several verses talking about who we should be submitted to. He doesn't tell everybody, but he tells some, some important things. Can I tell you who some of them are? First of all, I love verse 22 right after verse 21. That verse 22 is anointed. It's, that verse is full of the Holy Ghost right there, verse 22. Huh? Yeah, it's, 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 it's powerful. Yeah, yeah. Submit, wives, submit to your own husbands. Has to the Lord. <laughs> Come on now, somebody holler at me for just a second. That's anointed. Come on, brothers, don't leave me hang out, out here by myself. 
Come on, get with a brother right now. I'm trying to help you out with your trifling self. She can't submit to you because you're trifling, lazy, irresponsible. But the Holy Ghost will help her submit to you even though you're a jacked up joker. And that, does, does anybody else feel the Holy Ghost oozing out of that verse other than me? Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. Submitting uh, to your own husband. For the husband, verse 23, is head of the wife, has also Christ as head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. In everything. Now, 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 let me say this. I feel tension in the room. I feel, I see some women looking at me out of the corner of their eyes. No, you don't submit to somebody asking you to be disobedient to God. You don't submit to somebody who's trying to get you to do something illegal, immoral, unethical, unscriptural. You're never called to do that. Okay, I gotta hurry up, my time is running out. Well, hold up. So, so a, a, a wife who is filled with the Holy Spirit will submit to her husband. Let me say that again. I think five people said amen on it. Let me say it again. I got to come down here and get in y'all's face. That's what I got to do. I want, I want you to get this in your heart and get it in your mind and get it in your spirit and understand a, a, a spirit-filled wife will submit to her husband. Amen. <laughs> John Jenkins didn't say this. I didn't write this. It's the word, the word of God. Watch the women on this fight right here. Husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church. Now they, they weren't saying nothing on the previous verse. Not look, look at them standing up, waving their hand, clapping. I've been preaching the word. And you weren't saying nothing. You were sitting now. You didn't say amen. Oh, I didn't get to the part you like. That's the part right there, verse 25. I'm praying the Holy Ghost fill you with His Spirit so you like all of the world. I'll take it. But I like that last Yeah. This is when a man is filled with the Holy Ghost, he will love his wife. I'm almost, I got to hurry up and finish here, but the bottom line is um, I need help. I need the Holy Ghost to love my wife because trying to understand women can be difficult. Come on, brother. Is that your husband right there? That's you. This your husband? What? When did you get married? July? What? I ain't met this joker. I didn't get my approval of this joke. Is he loving you? He does. He does. Oh. <laughs> A man 
was praying to God. And God said, what do you want? And the man said, I want to. He lived in California. He wanted to go to Hawaii, but he was afraid to fly. So he asked God, build a bridge from California to Hawaii. <laughs> God said, you know how much time that would take, how much money and concrete and steel for you just to be able to go to Hawaii? How un that's unreasonable. It's too much money. It's going to take too long. Ask me for something else. So the man said, wow. He thought about it. He said, okay, Lord, help me to understand my wife. After, after a few minutes, God said, now, how many lanes do you want that bridge? <laughs> I need help, y'all. I'm just trying to tell you, I need the Holy Spirit to help me deal with my wife's hot flashes and her hot this moment and cold that morning, morning and, and I need help to be able to be paid and listen to her. I need to learn how to, I need the Holy Ghost to help me hear her and, and listen to what she's saying because she talked, you know, when I want to ask a simple question, how much was the groceries? And she's going to tell me she had to go to this store and go to that store. And, and she had to go to this store because when she got there, they didn't have so-and-so, so she had to run. I just wanted to know how much money to charge against the account. Y'all not understanding what I'm saying. But when a man gets filled with the Holy Ghost, God will give you grace. God will give you the power. And God will give you direction. And he will help you understand her. I'm almost finished. Verse 28 says, so, so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. So, so we submit, we're submitting to wives to husbands, husbands to love their wives. Y'all see that right there? Uh, go down to chapter 6. And here's, here's the third submission. It deals with children and parents. Here's submission. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Children need to the Holy Ghost so they can listen to their parents. How many, I, I learned with my six kids that they didn't have to be taught to be, to be disobedient. Okay. Their flesh rolls up in their flesh. But they, they do need the Holy Ghost to listen to their parents, Amen. to be obedient. And it says in verse 2, honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise. So, so this, when you feel with the Holy Spirit, children, that means here's what a child is. Somebody else is taking care of you. Somebody else is paying your rent or your mortgage or putting a roof over your head or putting clothes on your back. That's a child. Look on your road. There's some 40-year-old children on your road somewhere. Y'all can't, y'all cannot handle the truth. If you 40 living at home and ain't paying no rent, I told my kids, my two youngest kids live with me, I told them, y'all got to start paying rent up in here. And they're trying to give me all of the reasons why they shouldn't have to pay rent. And I said to them, um, you going to pay some rent. Amen. Amen. I thought, that, I thought the parents would be standing up cheering me on, preaching on, pastor. It's too late now, y'all. Y'all come on later. Children, when you are being careful about somebody else, you obey. The next verse says honor. What does that mean? Honor your parents. When you become grown, establish your own family, taking care of yourself, your parents' opinion. That's what honor means. You give... You give consideration to it. You're not obligated to obey, but you give honor. And to me, for honor meant taking care of my parents. As they reached the senior seasons of their life, I took care of them. I'm struggling with people who say they got the Holy Ghost but don't care nothing about their parents. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. 
You don't ever go by to see your parents. You don't do nothing for your parents. I'm struggling. They done took care of your little nasty behind while you was snotty nose and dirty diapers and they took care of you. You should take care of them. Ooh. Okay, I got one more thing. I, okay, I got to finish. I really, for real. I'm, y'all know I was in Seattle last week and I miss being here. Thank, thank Pastor Paul Shepard for preaching for me last Sunday. Here's verse five. Here's my last point. Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling and sincerity of heart has to Christ. This deals with your boss. Amen. Submit to your boss. Yeah. Not with our service, verse six, has men pleases, but bond servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. Now, I, I love this passage, too, because it's, it's not only telling you to submit to your boss. It's, uh, this is also a passage to challenge bosses with how they treat the people who work for them. Amen. Um, so, uh, I, y'all got that outline? Y'all see that up there? I want y'all to, I, I, you know what I want us to do? I want us to pray that you ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. So you can live a spirit-filled life. Amen. 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 If you're not saved and you want to get saved, come here right now. Just, just be humble yourself. Jesus died on the cross. You, say, you might be saying, I, I didn't violate everything that this here that he's mentioned or one of these things. But I want the Spirit of God. I want Jesus in my life. Jesus loves you and he will forgive you of your sins. Let me invite you here. If you're here today and you're backslidden and you're not sure, you're not walking with God, or you know you're not walking with God, come. This is the time to come right now, right this moment. Or if you are saved, but you don't have a church home, right now, it would be the time to come. We welcome you to come right now. Or if you're unsure about your eternal destiny, come right now. I see you. Come on. Amen. unsaved, you need Jesus, forgiveness of sins, you're backslidden, you need to rededicate, you're not sure of your eternal status, you're already saved and you need a church. Right this moment is the time to come. Don't delay. Come right this instant, right this moment. Say yes to God, the God of the universe. Come. next to you and ask him, are you right with God? Tell him, you're not, let's go get right with God. Say, I'll walk down there with you. You don't have to walk by yourself. And invite them to come. Do
Father, I thank you for these who have come. I pray for you to fill them with your spirit. Manifest yourself to them. Let their faith be extended to you. Give them a heart of repentance. Plant them in your vineyard. In Jesus' name, amen.